Hello, everyone, and welcome for joining our SAP community call today. Um, my name is Lena. I am part of the SAP community and influencers team, and I'm here today um, more on the technical side. So I am just hosting from a technical perspective, but not from a content perspective. Therefore, I have my lovely colleague, Cecilia Huergo, who is uh, today moderating this call alongside her colleagues, Harsh, Piyush, and Udo, um, who will let us know more about SAP integration speed. Um, just for like some housekeeping rules, um, the chat function here in Zoom um, is more really for um, chatting um, and I give you some um, useful resources into the chat and you can also share our SAP community profile links for instance, um, you can let us know where you're from etc. But if you really have questions um, content related, there is the Q&A button at um, the bottom of your screen. Um, and please type in your questions there because we have plenty of time towards the end of the call to address all of them. And uh, also, if you want to speak up, um, raise your hand and we can unmute you um, then during the Q&A part. But now let's get started and I hand over to Fiti. So thank you, Lena. Um, and yeah, hi, everybody. Welcome from my side to this new community, SAP community call on SAP integration suite and how you can use it within your rise with SAP journey. Um, so like Lena mentioned, we were actually um, doing a session this morning. Um, so this is the second time that I am here accompanied by my amazing experts. Um, so I'm really happy to kind of talk to them again about integration suite. And we're also really looking forward to getting your questions so that you know we can make this as interactive as possible and that we can really answer some of the the burning questions that you have around SAP integration suite and how you can start your your integration journey. Um, so before we get started, let's just kind of briefly set the stage. Um, so again, we're talking about um, SAP integration suite, which is an instrumental or, or foundational part of the SAP business technology platform. And as you probably know, so SAP BTP actually comes with the Rise with SAP offering, because it's really uh, one of the accelerators and one of the offerings that we have that can really help you transform and can really help your journey towards the cloud. Um, so whether you are you know, an, an SAP ECC customer or just starting your S4HANA journey, SAP BTP is really the platform that you can use not only for integration, which we will discuss in, discuss in depth today, but also for your extension possibilities. So it's it's the foundation of everything that you can um, you can expand with with TP. Um, and again, this is you know we are going to focus a little bit on Rise with SAP and Rise with SAP Contact, but this call is open to everybody, open to all our customers, the entire community, um, because we really want to make sure that you can leverage the capabilities that we offer with SAP Integration Suite. And as I was mentioning, I do have three amazing experts on the call today. So we have Harsh, who is um, the VP and head of um, product management and strategy for the integration suite. We also have Udo, who is a product manager for the integration suite. And Piyush, well, you know, you guessed it as well, um, director of product management for integration suite. So again, they are, they are stellar. They were able to answer a ton of questions this morning. So I'm really, really looking forward to your um, questions this afternoon to see how we can, how we can tackle them. Um, all right, but with that, uh, let's get started. So um, Harsh, the first question that I have is going to be for you. Um, again, we talk about integration as a foundational part of any cloud transformation journey. I mean, we know this, we've discussed this at length with several, several different customers, several different webinars, um, but can you share a little bit more about why SAP Integration Suite really works with Rise with SAP and what's the value our customers can get? Absolutely. Thank you for having us, uh, Ceci. Uh, really appreciate it. A warm welcome to everybody in the call. Thank you for taking the time. So let me actually set the context straight. Um, our customers across every industry, across every geography, they're trying to uh, go into a digital transformation. They're looking at accelerating their journey to the cloud and to becoming intelligent enterprises. Integration is a core foundation. If you have to be an intelligent enterprise to be able to connect your front office to your back office, to be able to lead to cash across all touch points that you have for a customer, to be able to recruit and retire, um, recruit to retire and look at the entire HXM or the human experience that you offer to your employees, to look at design, to operate, 
to be able to really connect with other applications, open up APIs, so on and so forth, right? So integration is the bedrock and we have a paper which our executive uh, board members have written, uh, starting from our CEO, Christian Klein, Jürgen and Thomas, um, which articulates this integration as the foundational pillar for an um, intelligent enterprise. The SAP integration suite is SAP's hybrid integration platform for the intelligent enterprise. It's available in all hyperscalers of choice. It's available uh, for you to integrate with other SAP applications, to be able to integrate with third-party applications that you have in your landscape across these end-to-end -end processes, to be able to open up APIs, to be able to integrate with governments, to establish digital ecosystems through EDI or through API, so on and so forth. And it's a comprehensive and versatile uh, integration offering for you. And uh, we have several thousand customers who use it and are successful with it. And the icing on the cake is the 2000 plus uh, prepackaged integrations that we deliver, right? And what's the goal here? When you talk about RISE and when we have conversations with customers and with a lot of our um, service providers, GSSPs, uh, 30 to 35% of RISE costs is on integration. And why is that so? ECC has been at the heart of customers' landscapes. SAP applications have been at the heart. They've been integrated with other third-party applications, with governments, EDI, and so on and so forth, right? So we really looked at the scenarios that our customers have, looked at it, classified it in terms of the different core processes that they run from lead to cash, to issue to resolution, to payment integration, to document compliance. And we've taken those scenarios and tried to offer them as out-of-the-box integrations. We have 2000 plus and every week and every month, we're adding more and more prepackaged integrations. So you can move from custom integrations to standard integrations as much as possible. And what this allows you to do is to sort of accelerate your RISE journey and reduce integration costs that you may incur during this RISE journey. And that's the overall context and that's how the SAP integration suite can help you accelerate RISE. Awesome. So thank you, Harsh. I think that sets the stage perfectly and it gives us also kind of um, leeway into my next question. Um, so Udo, Harsh was mentioning all these kind of um, prepackaged integration contexts that customers can use as accelerators. Can you share a little bit more about really how, how that works with an integration suite? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. That's a very great question. Thank you, Ceci, and also a very warm welcome from my side as well to this community call and yeah, Harsh put it nicely into one sentence. Né? So the icing that we provide with SAP integration suite is the prepackaged integration content integration packs, which are pre-configured scenarios, which are maintained by our applications, success factors, Conquer, uh, um, S for HANA, et cetera. So it's prepackaged content, which helps our customers to accelerate the integration scenarios. So it comes with business process blueprints, with the integration flows, with APIs, with the um, pre-configured adapters and significantly reduces the implementation efforts, the integration efforts né, by a factor of 10 by, uh, for, uh, uh, when it comes to a factor of, of, of costs and by a factor of five by uh, when it comes to time. So it significantly reduces the costs and times of uh, provide, uh, of uh, implementing the integration scenarios. And this prepackaged content comes within the line of our uh, core four mega processes like lead to cash, source to pay, hire to retire, additional scenarios. A nice example are the e-document scenarios. And every country around the globe has more and more legal scenarios where companies doing business in these legal in these countries and they need to provide legal data like tax data for example to to the legal authorities of the respective countries and every country has different regulations how the data need to be provided via which communication protocols via which uh, um, security standards that need to be that that need to be leveraged so all this content is maintained by SAP, updated by SAP when new legal changes come along, new scenarios are being provided, and it provides or we provide content for the integration of SAP as well as non-SAP applications, be it Salesforce integration with SAP S4 HANA, ERP with Ariba, HCM with success factors. So 2000 plus integration scenarios we ship out of the box with any license of integration suite. 
And to show you a concrete example, Ceci, then we can go to the next slide yeah. where you can see a quick demo on the new user experience of the SAP API business where you can nicely yeah, search along LOB solutions like S4HANA, along our core for mega processes, along content categories like events, APIs, um, uh, the prepackaged content. Also, partners can contribute to our content. So, please, all the partners listening to us, kindly be motivated to publish your content on the API Business Hub. You can search here, for example, along scenarios here in the SAP S4 HANA context, for example, different country specific e document scenarios, other solutions, Salesforce. Now, we clicked here. So, we provide here nine different. Yeah, integration scenarios, including integration flows, adapters for the integration, bidirectional integration between Salesforce and S4HANA and directly from the SAP Business Hub, you can even assign, add these integration packages to your own workspace, to your own tenant, to your own integration suite tenant. Yeah. And again, no, with this prepackaged content is one of the icings, not the only one, but a very important icing that we deliver with the integration suite significantly reduces time and effort for integration projects. Yeah, and with this, yeah. back to you, Ceci, for the next <laughs> yeah. icing that we provide. Integration suite. Perfect. Thank you, Udo. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's just to kind of drill in that point. It's super important that we provide these kind of standard packages because that means that customers don't need to maintain them separately, right? They don't need to, mm -hmm. like you said, they don't need to waste time. They don't need to waste money. They don't need to waste resources in adapting their custom integrations every time something changes. We provide that out of the box. So, um, so they get that kind of cost and time benefit because we all know time is money right so yes. it's it's important to save on both fronts um and the api business hub everything that we showed is available today so customers can already go in and take mm -hmm. take advantage of all that all the content that we have there so great thank you udo for sharing mm -hmm. sure. um right so the next icing on the cake and also kind of the <laughs> next um one of the one of the questions that we receive a lot and piyush this is this is maybe for you um mm -hmm. Our customers, you know, SAP has been around for a while and we have several on-prem customers that already have an integration strategy in place for on-prem. So the, they either have, you know, process integration, process orchestration. So the main question is for our customers that already have that implemented, how can they move to the cloud? How can they move to SAP integration suite? Uh, thank you, Ceci, for asking this question. I think it's a very important one um, and a warm welcome from my side as well before I start the answer. Um, so, we are fully committed. We need to understand that uh, we have process integration or process orchestration offering for many years now. So we have a full commitment towards our existing customers and we want to take them along with this integration journey in an easy and flexible way and transition them towards integration suite. Especially with RISE, uh, customers are re-looking into their business processes and while transitioning towards cloud, they, would, they are also leveraging uh, the cloud benefits, uh, innovations that exist. They want to relook into their uh, business models as well. And uh, they are mainly looking how they can simplify um, and standardize their business scenarios that they are having. So customers who are transitioning towards cloud, uh, our recommendation is uh, please have all the benefits from Rise with SAP initiative that we are having, and especially related to integration. We want them to start uh, their journey with integration suite for uh, cloud and uh, hybrid scenarios. When I say hybrid, that means uh, cloud and on-prem integrations. Uh, they can leverage uh, 2000 prepackaged uh, integration scenarios that Udo and Hush talked about uh, that spans across SAP and third-party systems and that um, have a lot of industry and LOB flavors in terms of uh, processes we have. Uh, we also have uh, third-party uh, connectors. We provide around 160 plus third-party out-of-the-box connectivity options. We want customers to have one solution, um, whether they want to do API-led integrations, government integrations, business partners integration, everything in one solution. Uh, in addition to that, the overall platform uh, that we have in cloud, that is integration suite, um, is, is low code, uh, no code design approach. So customers really get uh, benefited out of uh, low total cost of development as well as DCO, uh, total cost of uh, no ownership, because uh, 
the updates, upgrades, everything is managed by SAP. And last, not but the least, security is a very important activity whenever we drive an in, uh, integration project. And we provide a way uh, without uh, having your firewall and networks discussion, you can easily connect with your on-premise applications from integration suite in the cloud. So this avoids uh, many of the tedious activities that you have to drive around taking approvals in your organization. While we uh, talk about standard scenarios, we also understand that customer has uh, uh, custom business uh, integrations as well. They have a lot of customized business scenarios specific uh, required for their organization. They have invested a lot over the years. Uh, though during this transition journey, everything is being relooked into, but there will be many times when uh, for, uh, for next few years, customer would like to retain their existing processes as well. And uh, we provide an uh, easy way. Uh, we uh, have APIs that are available in both the solutions that can be used to shift objects from PIPO to integration suite. And on top, uh, we also provide out of the box um, migration of integration content. Sometimes we call it as interfaces and message mappings in PO language. Uh, that takes around 50% uh, of the effort in any integration project, right? Because a uh, lot of uh, domain experts, business domain, functional consultants, technical designers uh, uh, work together and come up with this uh, message mappings, how uh, two or more business systems sh uh, should talk to each other because they are different semantics, different structures. And we have provided a button click way uh, from integration suite. Uh, you can explore what sort of uh, objects you would like to uh, reuse. And uh, the moment you are into that wizard, immediately all the objects you can import it into your integration suite. So we are well covered from the migration perspective. Uh, and in addition, we are also um, working with uh, partners. We have recently launched a hackathon where we have invited partners to automate some of these uh, procedures as well, so that further uh, we can provide the complete end value to the customers. And last uh, category is where we have customers who are still using on ground to ground integration scenarios where they have invested a lot from many years. Uh, so our message to those customers is please continue using process integration and process orchestration, right? Uh, we want to provide these new innovations to um, on-premise customers as well. That's why four or five years back, we took a step where we provided our cloud runtime innovations for on-premise customers as well as part of uh, PO 7.5 so that customers can design their scenarios in cloud and without having additional need of infrastructure investment, they can continue using the new innovations from cloud, yeah? Uh, but this is not the final step. Uh, we were working on a long-term strategy. So what we want to offer customer is a lean standalone installation of our cloud runtime that they can deploy in their private data centers, private cloud, on-premise, anywhere. And that comes power coupled and tightly integrated components with uh, API management, third-party connectors, B2B integration, everything in one box. Yeah, so um, to summarize, uh, we uh, we are we have full commitment towards our existing PIPO customers, and we want to take them along uh, in this transition journey. Awesome, perfect, thank you. Um, so the other um, kind of the other thing that we wanted to mention today, I think, is also related to kind of the partners and the enablement content that we have and how we collaborate with our partners. So, Piyush, do you want to talk a little bit about that um, experience? Yes, uh, so we are deeply engaged with ecosystem. So there are uh, different initiatives we are having. Uh, so we are working with a lot of partners uh, who are building solutions on top of our integration. Uh, they are offering it as integration as a service or they are building uh, uh, supply chain or other business critical applications where integration is involved and integration is mandatory rather say, right? In all these uh, requirements. So they are building solutions on top of our integration solutions. And one of the area where partners have um, uh, a lot of investment uh, we are seeing, and this is open call to everyone here as well, uh, that like SAP is providing 2000 plus uh, prepackaged integrations, uh, partners can also identify a lot of white spaces with third party application with their own solution ISVs that they have built. They can build these uh, prepackaged integration and uh, we have a, a standard way of how they can host it on API business hub. They need to contact us and we will help them with end to end process. In addition, they can also uh, bring a lot of third party connectors uh, specific to certain applications that they are dealing uh, on customers with. 
on uh, second side we are engaging with uh, service implementation partners who are working closely with us in understanding product roadmaps um, uh, what is coming new um, uh, from the migration journeys perspective we are having a lot of enablement sessions they are part of our uh, customer engagement initiatives where we are getting deep collaboration with them and getting feedback and product insights from the improvement perspective and uh, we are also running uh, many enablement streams like black belt uh, we launched this course this was very popular uh, we have many consultants who are uh, now black belt certified we have special badges for them and this uh, stream is continuing we are launching more and more black belt sessions and you will get to hear uh, from us uh, very soon when is the next uh, stream is getting started and then we have a community where um, customers uh, our partners sap all can collaborate. Uh, we have many different channels, uh, how we are uh, fully plugged in into our ecosystem. Awesome, perfect. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it's very important kind of to highlight, like you mentioned, if you know if customers are looking to migrate if they're they're trying to start that migration journey from pipo to integration suite there's a lot of support out there not just from sap but also from our certified partners that yes. we have absolutely perfect. perfect all right um so i'm very happy to say that it's time for q a um lena maybe while we gather the questions you can also put up the poll um we just have kind of two short questions for everybody and i see that somebody was also already very um very busy answering um, questions, which was hard. So maybe we'll share that just kind of in the audio version so that people that haven't read the questions can can get the full scope of the answer. Um, so Harsh, let's start with the first one. Um, so, okay, so Chapani writes, we understand the application integration solutions for the contemporary applications on cloud or on-prem, but could you speak specifically on how customers can leverage the out-of-the-box integrations for legacy applications in manufacturing domains? In our experience, there are at least 40, 50% interface um, solutions that lie in this space. So uh, let me take that question. And I also tried to uh, give a brief answer in the chat. And um, Chapani, this is a really good question because we always talk about these more modern API and event-based integrations that are out there. And we have a lot of prepackaged uh, content there that allows you to accelerate. But there are, of course, domains specifically on um, source to pay and manufacturing and so on and so forth, where there is a lot of EDI today, right? Um, and there is also a lot of file-based integration. And what we do with EDI is we offer a very comprehensive integration advisor um, and integration advisor leverages AI and ML to help you simplify all these complex mappings for EDI. You can actually choose um, uh, of the different variants uh, of EDI formats. You can actually define your industry and you can define your geography and you can get very precise mapping uh, for your EDI, and this will actually help you accelerate onboarding of uh, trading partners. So there is a lot of out-of-the-box content out there. And for specific file-based integrations, we see a lot of file-based, I mean, we have regular support for SFTP. In fact, we were debating a lot about even offering, if, uh, whether we should even offer FTP in this modern world, but we did offer FTP because our customers really asked for it. Um, and we also see a lot of movement from managed file transfer kind of legacy solutions to using blob storage um, on the hyperscalers like S3 or the Azure blob storage, where customers are using that to also exchange data. So we also support that natively. So we have out of the box content in summary to your question for EDI, as well as we support uh, traditional file based integrations. Perfect. You see, that's why I love when you answer them in audio format, because you go so much into detail that we get all the aspects of it. Um, and just kind of a quick comment. I, I love the integration advisor. I mean, every time I'm, you know, in front of customers talking about the integration suite, we always bring this up and they're always super interested. And you read all these, you know, all these blog, all these articles about how customers that follow the recommendations provided by integration advisor can actually accelerate their integration a project by 60%. And I think that that's just amazing. I mean, again, we're going back to the time is money part. So mm -hmm. take advantage of integration advisor. It's part of integration suite. You can use it and leverage the, the solution there. Okay, um, next question that I think Harsh also answered, but let's get the audio version. Um, so it's anonymous, so can't say your name, but um, integration suite hybrid deployment of runtime agent. 
does it eliminate the need for cloud connectors and local SAC cloud connector agents? Yes, uh, so when you're doing ground to ground scenarios and you're deploying some of your integration packs uh, or custom integrations that you're building on cloud integration uh, into your PI runtime agent, you do not need cloud connector. Cloud connector is primarily used for cloud to ground and ground to cloud uh, integration scenarios, but not for ground to ground. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so we have a few more questions now. Uh, let's see. Um, so maybe Udo, uh, maybe mm -hmm. this one is, is for you. Um, currently, we are still using IDOC integration with S4 HANA on-prem. Will these prepackaged contents move towards OData API calls? or will we still use IDOC going forward? And then they give an example, which is uh, commerce cloud integration with S4 HANA on-prem still use IDOC integration, whereas Salesforce integration with S4 HANA uses API calls to S4 HANA. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's also a good question, <laughs> Ceci. Also goes into the direction of the content. So if you, I mean, you can find this answer also on the API Business Hub as a short response. Of course, the strategic APIs the dear customer anonymous is of course rest apis web service apis to some extent and also data api so this is definitely the direction that we go with sap s for hana you can find the apis in prepackaged content you know, for salesforce integration with sap s for hana for example and other s for hana scenarios on the api business hub idoc scenarios of course are also continue to be supported but it's the traditional way of integration yeah but the standard the new way of integration is using all new apis you know, via web service apis rest apis and odata apis yeah and also the key focus of our prepackaged content is on the new apis you know, like rest odata and web service apis Perfect. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's an API based integration strategy moving exactly. forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. The next question um, from Shreya. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it says, okay, hi, could you please let us know the integration technology used for planning on clouds so IBP? Mm -hmm. Can we integrate or use any API available for CPIDS to help us integrate to more third-party systems like um, Salesforce or Amazon Data Lakes? Mm -hmm. The short answer would be also yes here. I mean, for IBP integration, cloud platform integration, the data service capabilities is the, um, is the tool of choice, is the recommended platform. And it's also actually this kind of question is also a nice <laughs> uh, handover to the uh, CIO guide and the detailed architectural guide where this kind of guidance uh, would could be found. No? But the short answer is definitely yes. For, for IBP use cases, the data services capabilities of cloud integration would be the platform that is being used in this context. This is okay. correct. Perfect. OK, and mm -hmm. that's actually a great point. We do have a lot of, of documentation, a lot of strategy papers, a lot of information out there on Integration Suite um, on our, our community page. We have them on the help portal. We have them, of course, on sap.com. I mean, Harsh mentioned the, the strategy paper also um, that was written by Christian Klein and team, and that also puts a primary focus on all these all these different um, supports as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. OK, so Piyush, maybe one for you. Um, so Joost asks, will it be possible to migrate the on-prem PO 7.5 solution to the Rise with SAP solution? If yes, will there be any restriction to functionality or feature on this? So I guess Rise with SAP solution would mean um, integration suite, right? So. Yes, so this is our recommendation that uh, you can use your interfaces because anyway you are transitioning towards cloud and the best of the breed the solution is integration suite for cloud integration and hybrid integration scenarios. Um, and we discussed in detail what sort of migration options are available, how can you do that? And uh, so I believe the answer is to that, yeah. Perfect, perfect. All right. Um, let's see. The next question also from, oh, Chapani says, thank you, Harsh. So that's awesome. You're welcome, Chapani. Um, all right. So from Anonymous, uh, does business APIs can handle huge data? Trans okay. So it would be like, can business APIs handle huge data transformations like RFC, IDOC integration in on-premise? So Harsh, you talked about, I think, that before. Do you want to take that? Or yes. I'm, uh, when... Um... Our, our dear friend Anonymous says business APIs 
I'm not sure if you mean OData APIs, right? Um, the OData APIs are also now getting more popularly used for integrations in our use in S4. That's the short answer. We still have usage of RFC and, and IDOCs for certain existing interfaces that you may have moved from ECC into S4, right? Um, but more and more when you're building new integrations, it's uh, recommended to start with OData. Okay, perfect. Um, and again, another point to the API Business Hub where you can find all these all these APIs and integration content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, there is a follow-up question, by the way, by Sheikh. Can you use RFC directly to do transactions uh, through, yeah. uh, through .NET connector? Well, yes, you can technically, but uh, you will not have any governance or you will not have any kind of uh, um, transactional capabilities, right? Uh, and this is something that we discourage. Okay. So it's not recommended. It's not recommended by us. All right. Um, okay. And you're gonna, you guys are gonna have to help me with the acronym here. Um, mm -hmm. So the question from yeah. Thirupati is: Are you bringing CIG, et cetera, under one umbrella? So first, maybe I want to take yes. that question. And okay. uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for asking that question. What is CIG? CIG is Arriba's Cloud Integration Gateway. And CIG is uh, internally using our cloud integration technology, integration suite. And we uh, built CIG for one reason, to support standard integrations into Ariba. If you are a buyer or a supplier who is happy with the standard and you do not have to do any integration, you as an integration expert will not need to deal with CIG. It's just done in a configure and use approach. Uh, we have always this concept about uh, embedded IPaaS or embedded integration offering into our industry cloud solutions, right? We have this in our vaccination hub. We have this in our pharma hub. We have this in our um, PayPal offering for e-government here in Europe procurement. We have this also for Ariba and procurement, right? But as soon as you see that you want to do more custom and complex integrations, then you have to break out of CIG and use the integration suite to do that. Um, there is, uh, these are complementary solutions, right? And it's built for different kinds of audiences. Perfect. Um, okay, so I love when I do these sessions because I always learn new things. I had no <laughs> idea what CIG stood for, so it's, it's great. Um, all right, um, Udo, maybe one for you about our monitoring mm -hmm. capabilities. So um, Sunil is asking, what are the additional monitoring capabilities in SAP mm -hmm. CPI planned, which will bridge the product gap um, with the established SAP PO monitoring capabilities mm -hmm. and troubleshooting? Yes, so many <laughs> capabilities will be offered here. So we are currently working now on enhancing, further enhancing the monitoring capabilities. Like we will offer a B2B monitoring, for example, which has a similar monitoring capabilities as the B2B add-on for process orchestration, for example, has. We can also monitor acknowledgements, for example, which belongs to a specific EDI scenario. So we will target the same capabilities in cloud integration as we already have on process orchestration. And plus additionally, we have already as of today, OData APIs, which customers can use né, to build their own monitoring tools on top of cloud integration or integration suite. And we also offer already for some scenarios and further are on the roadmap as well, end-to-end -end monitoring via the um, SAP Cloud Application Lifecycle Management, ALM. Cloud ALM, where you can do end-to-end -end monitoring, tracking of an entire end-to-end -end scenario between S4HANA, for example, or SuccessFactor. So we have already end-to-end -end monitoring capabilities for a certain set of scenarios further are planned along the roadmap. So even here, customers enjoy end-to-end -end monitoring capabilities. But coming back to this question, further monitoring capabilities are planned along the roadmap you know, for B2B monitoring, for example, and further monitoring features no, that are also that customers are used from the on-premise process orchestration system. Perfect. 
Perfect. Um, and of course, kind of going back to what we also mentioned this morning in terms of where customers can find this information, uh, we have recently, so since last year, we have the Roadmap Explorer, um, which is kind of a dynamic uh, UI-based roadmap. So we moved away from the static, you know, presentations that we updated every quarter to provide kind of this more updated and dynamic um, UI based roadmap. So you can go to um, the roadmap explorer and you'll find the integration suite updates, all the content, the planned innovations um, already updated there. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, next question. So uh, Piyush, um, I'll go to you since you said you wanted to answer this one. Um, is SAP planning to save runtime data or payload for a specific interval like we do in uh, PO, in process orchestration? Uh, uh, answer is yes, we are working on it. And uh, adding to what Udo said, uh, with B2B monitoring that we are planning to have an ADI specific monitoring because we understand that there are bu different business personas uh, who look after uh, EDI operation support. We are also working on bringing this uh, archiving option because it is also important from an EDI um, a compliance requirement because once you exchange business documents, uh, there is a need to store the business data for certain years. So we want to enhance integration suite and bring out this uh, archiving functionality, which will help you not only save B2B messages, but any sort of messages, including A2A and others as well. Okay, so a lot of goodies to come. That's good. <laughs> um, and I think there was a follow-up question. So also for Mukul, and he says, also with this retry mechanism without using JMS. Is that also covered, Piyush? Or? Uh, yes, we have that. Um, so, uh, I mean, JMS is an integral part. So it is internally used within integration suite. So what we have uh, done with integration suite, we have... Uh, uh, earlier, there were certain restrictions on JMS queues, and you have to uh, procure it separately. Now, everything is bundled into integration suite. So uh, it is unlimited. Once you subscribe to integration suite, you can configure your retry mechanism. You can identify which one are your business critical scenarios, and you can enable retry mechanism on that. But we don't want to provide it as uh, by default for all scenarios, because uh, this is not what customers are asking us, uh, but for all critical business scenarios, you can optionally anytime. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, Harsh, so the next one is for you. Um, so Johan is asking, are there any best practices recommended by using API management with integration suite in combination? Absolutely, thank you, Johan, for the question. Um, what We have a full uh, lifecycle API platform. And what that means is, um, in addition to managing API endpoints um, from your SAP systems or third-party systems and creating a unified API layer, you could also definitely build new APIs in a low-code fashion using the cloud integration capability. Uh, the API management capability, the cloud integration capability, the open connector capability, all of them are really, really brought together in the integration suite. So you could really uh, do low-code API development now. Um, and if you are a CPI developer who's used to uh, building CPI flows, you use the same skills to build low-code APIs and take an API-led integration approach. Uh, we have some best practices that we talk in our existing API management open SAP course, but we also gonna talk about a bit more uh, specifically in our new uh, open SAP course that's gonna be launching in July and uh, stay right till the end. We're gonna share more details about it. Yeah, excellent. That's a great plug. All right, cool. Um, okay, so Piyush, again, the next one is for you. So Siddharth is asking, is SAP CPI capable of having interface with non SAP based systems as out of the box features? Uh, absolutely. This is one of the core functionality we are having. Uh, we ship Aprox 160 plus out of the box connectors uh, that you can utilize for connecting to third party uh, technical systems or applications. And in addition to that, uh, we also ship a lot of prepackaged integration where business logic is also written. Uh, uh, for lead to cash and procure to pay all other scenarios between third party applications and SAP that uh, you can leverage it quickly to during your implementation projects. Perfect. Um, all right, so I can't believe it, but we actually kind of answered all the all the questions that we have here live, but 
people, you can uh, you can keep them coming. Um, but maybe harsh something that I wanted to talk about again this afternoon, because it was asked a lot in the morning, is about the relationship between SAP Event Mesh and the integration suite. So how you can you can really work with um, event driven architecture and building that up? Absolutely, that's a great question. So. Uh, uh, let's take a step back and see how things are evolving now. The world is becoming more event-driven. Um, in the past, event-driven has been uh, quite talked about, uh, but not done enough, right, in reality. Uh, but now it's becoming the norm of how you build integrations and extensions. So the SAP Event Mesh is SAP's technology which exposes events in a way that it can be shared in a federated multi-cloud environment. And what are the advantages of these events? Uh, there are two things that I automatically see. One is your interactions become real-time interactions rather than batch and file-based interactions. The second thing is your integrations become really extensible. And what do I mean by that? We have a big airline customer who's actually using events. Let's take an example of the um, employee hire event. And when employee hire happens, there are a few things that happen within the SAP boundaries, right? But there are also downstream systems where you know employees get provisioned into Slack systems, employees get onboarded into third-party benefit systems, into payroll systems, third-party payroll systems, and so on and so forth. So now uh, you can actually build iFlows or automations to react to those events and make your integration really, really extensible, right? So Events and event-driven integration is a core capability of the SAP integration suite. The SAP event mesh uh, in combination allows you to build event-driven architectures. There are two ways that you could use it. One, we have event broker and async capability directly embedded into cloud integration, right? Or uh, the JMS capability as it's popularly known. And Piyush was explaining that it's currently directly embedded. It's fully, uh, you can leverage it without any limits for your async queue-based processing traditionally. Then you also have the event mesh with which you can expand into other events like events coming from IoT devices, events coming from other applications, processing those events, and also being able to publish those events in a federated multi-cloud setup. So that's how uh, we're going more and more event-driven with the SAP event mesh and the SAP integration suite. Perfect. Matt, you took all the questions from this morning and summed it up to one. So that's mm -hmm. that's great. Awesome. All right. So we have uh, we have a few more questions now. Um, let's see. So Durga is asking, what are CPI capabilities for event streaming integrations in edge computing scenarios? So like IoT. So I don't know, maybe Udo, if you can uh, take that. Right. Um, okay, now I just don't see the. <laughs> The question is, what are uh, on the I mm -hmm. IoT? Yeah. Right. I mean, we have IoT capabilities on the uh, on the SAP integration suite. We have there are tons of adapters available now for which we actually are packaged in the IoT services of the business technology platform. So there we provide typical communication protocols like IoT communication protocols. Plus, there are also CPI adapters available also for IoT. Uh, uh, integration scenarios like via MQTT, for example, HTTP, webhook-based integrations are also supported. So there are several IoT-based, typical IoT-based uh, communication protocols supported via SAP IoT services of the business technology platform. And we also have several um, yeah, IoT adapters like MQTT and also HTTP is used in uh, in several iot based scenarios perfect and, yeah and yeah and just adding to it uh, right. you were right mm -hmm. so we have a special iot services solution available uh, we have a edge streaming engine that can mm -hmm. connect to shop floor applications manufacturing machines and a lot many others and um, you can get the business data and you can also uh, in conjunction use uh, it for raising business alerts or critical business decision as part of the overall CPIS suite. So it is well covered. And we also have uh, this edge capability where you can connect to uh, uh, machines and devices. 
Yeah. And I think if if you know if our community is looking for more information on those specific services, a great resource is the service catalog in the SAP Discovery Center. So there you have the entire cloud portfolio that we offer um, for BTP, and you can check out the SAP IoT service. You can check out cloud integration or the integration suite and all the capabilities within like integration API management. And that also gives you the great kind of direct access to all the resources like the API hub, the connectors, and all the documentation. So you can kind of read more about that if you're interested. So good. Thank you for wrapping it up. Mm. Um, okay, so Japani <laughs> is asking a great, like a kind of cheeky question, I would say. Um, so Harsh, I know you want to you want to answer. Um, anything you can say, like any insider scoop you can give us about what's <laughs> happening for Sapphire this year in regards to integration suite? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to share some insider scoop. So what, what is the main message? We're going to talk to our customers in Sapphire about how they could accelerate their rise journey. SAP integration suite is a key part of that journey. And as part of that, we're going to talk about certain new um, integration facts that will come up, specifically connecting to very popular uh, non-SAP systems that our customers have. For example, we will have a workday integration pack where we will ship all the business processes that need to um, happen between Workday and s We will have the same thing with ServiceNow, uh, specifically in field services and ITSM. And we already have a very successful integration pack for uh, Salesforce. So that's the main uh, part on how we help by providing more and more integration packs to help our customers accelerate their uh, rise journey. Okay. The second thing is uh, we will also have a native integration with uh, Confluent, Confluent, Kafka, and uh, even based integrations with Confluent and Kafka is extremely popular um, at our customers. And uh, we will have we just launched uh, SAP integration suite Confluent Adapter also in the Confluent Hub now, and we're going to talk a little bit about it, of how our joint customers can go more and more towards uh, event-driven approaches, right, uh, with Confluent. Last but not the least, no, let me save save this for Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, I was like on the edge of my seat already. Come on, Harsh. Okay, cool. Well, but thank you for those tidbits. Um, and just as a reminder for everybody, registration is already live um, for Sapphire. So you can go to sap.com and register and it starts June 5th. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, next question. I have to say that I thought I was pretty good with acronyms, but <laughs> after today, I think I'm going to have to go back to like the drawing board. Okay, so Joan is asking, and Udo, I think this one is for you, is MII considered to be part of all this integration suite in the near future, or is it totally different integration approach? You know, so MII, right, so this is for, it goes also in, into the IoT direction, no? so integration of shop floor, what also Piyush was, was actually answering before. So uh, it's a, a scenario supported no, with the uh, business technology platform. It also belongs into the wider context no, of SAP integration suite. Though it's uh, with integration suite, of course, we focus on our key scenarios and as we speak, and as process integration, data integration, API-based integration, event-based integration, IoT in the wider context, yes, but covered mainly via the business technology platform. Okay. So through our services, through time. our, our IoT e exactly. capabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome, yeah. good. Um, always learning new acronyms. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I think there was one question about the black belt if it was not available for customers, but I think we covered that also in the morning Piyush and it is available for customers as well, right? The black belt uh, for integration suite? Yes, I think Harsh also shared where you can go and register it. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, cool. So let me just double check. I think we have answered all the uh, all the questions, yeah, I don't see. So if, if anybody else has, you know, we have time, I think, for maybe one or two more questions. So please um, keep them coming. Um, maybe just kind of one more question that we also had in, in the morning is like, where can customers refer to if they want to get kind of hands-on uh, capabilities or, or yeah, hands-on skills for integration suite? So I know, Harsh, you mentioned already the Open SAP course, but is there any other 
resource or yeah platform that you guys recommend to to actually learn and touch <laughs> let's say integration suite so get tangible experience with it Uh, so the first thing is we have a fully featured trial, right? So you have to definitely go and sign up for the fully featured trial. We have Discovery Center missions. And when you sign up as a customer to these missions, there is somebody there, an angel there to help you walk you through this mission. These missions are based on the use cases that we see at our customers. The third thing is we have... Um, three open SAP courses, one on cloud integration, one on API management, one on simplifying integration with integration suite. Uh, we have additional courses on integration advisor that was very, very successful beginning of the year. Uh, if you are an architect and trying to learn about our integration solution advisory methodology, if you're an architect into integration, you need to know the integration solution advisory methodology. We have another beautiful course that explains it um, as well. What we are going to do in um, July is to launch what we call as a masterclass. And unfortunately for trademark reasons, we were not allowed to call it masterclass, but that is really a masterclass, uh, the one that's coming up in July, 2021, where you can learn deeper skills into uh, being a real expert on integration uh, building enterprise level integrations, right? You can learn about event based integrations, API based integrations, so on and so forth. There is tons and tons of material out there. And once you have mastered all of this, uh, also cap it up the icing on the cake again, <laughs> becoming the black belt. So we opened up black belts to our partners and to our customers. And becoming the black belt allows you to do one thing, which is be a trusted advisor. If you're already part of a customer, be a trusted advisor to your executive team because integration is an executive level discussion these days, right? So you can be the trusted advisor to your executive team to help them guide in the right path. If you are a partner, you can be the trusted advisors to customers. And I would really encourage all of you to sign up and become integration backups. Perfect. And you know, with all this talk about cake, I'm actually hungry, but you know, that's a different, that's a different thing. Um, all right. I'm here. <laughs> all right. Good. Um, so just kind of to, to wrap it up, um, we've, we've been able to answer all the questions, which is fantastic. We got a lot of information on what's coming up for integration suite. We even got tidbits and kind of a preview of what's going to be announced in Sapphire. So that was spectacular. Um, I will be publishing a wrap up blog, just kind of documenting all the all the questions that we answered today, kind of the flow, and also providing links to some of the resources that you mentioned. So for example, the black belt that you already posted, um, the open SAP courses that are available and discovery center, the mission so that people can go in and get started. Um, of course, the BTP trial is available, like Harsh said, on sap.com. So just Google for SAP BTP trial and you'll be able to, to register and sign up if you haven't already. Um, and I do um, want to mention kind of before we wrap up that, as I said in the beginning, this is a series and we'll be kind of, uh, we'll be coming back together every month um, to share more opportunities that you have with SAP BTP to complete your use cases along your Rise with SAP journey. So be sure to follow us on the community, um, follow the blog that uh, Lena already shared in the beginning in the chat so that you can make sure to know what other sessions are coming and, and register for that for that as well. But yeah, so with that, I would like to thank you guys very much. Um, I don't know if you have any kind of closing words or closing statements that you'd like to share with the audience, but thanks everybody for joining. And, and thanks you, of course, to my, to my awesome um, panel of experts that always answer everything that is thrown at them, which is fantastic. So uh, I just want to say a big thank you to you as a community. Uh, you really energize, energize us. Uh, thanks for uh, taking time today. And uh, we really look forward to continuously engaging with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And Ceci also for the awesome <laughs> organization <laughs> and moderation of the community call. So all the, all the uh, lobe goes back to you as well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank goodies. you, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. for this wonderful session. Thanks for listening to us. Now we can go get a uh, coffee and cake. Okay, cake, exactly. <laughs> With a lot yes. of icing. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys.
I couldn't okay. agree more. Thanks also from my side for that lovely session and for that great moderation. Thanks for taking on my job. <laughs> yeah. All right. All the best. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.